down to see. Today we're going to be doing step, it's step two, question one, 2004. Pause the video, can you solve this question from the Cambridge entrance exam? So, first of all, I'm going to zoom out, get close to the camera, and I'm looking at our first equation. The main problem for us is definitely the square roots, it's the square roots. So I'm going to try something crude, right? Let's just move everything with the square root onto one side. So on the left hand side, I'm going to get 3x squared plus 1, plus square root of x, and then this is going to be equal to 1 plus 2x. Now, let's just square it. That's, I mean, that's the method we use to get rid of square roots. Uh, this times this times 2 is going to be plus 2 times square root of x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1. And then don't forget squaring the square root of x. So you're going to get plus x. This has to be equal to 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared. I'm going to move everything, rearrange and cancel. So 4x squared minus 3x squared is going to be x squared. There's only the 4x, the ones are going to, oh sorry, it's 4x minus x, so in fact it's 3x. The ones are going to cancel, and on the left hand side, we're still left with 2 times the square root of x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1. Now I'm going to highlight that in red, and you'll see why later. And now let's just go from there. So we have this line. We still have a square root. Well, if I square again, I'm definitely going to get rid of the square roots on the left hand side, but I'm going to end up with a quartic on the right hand side. Well, it's worth it. Let's just go for it. So we're going to get 4x times 3x squared plus 1 on the left hand side. On the right hand side, just squaring it, I'm going to get x to the 4 plus 6x cubed plus 9x squared. Rearranging. Well, I'll expand this first, how about that? So I get 12x cubed plus 4x on the left hand side. And now let's just rearrange. So I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get x to the 4. And then the x cubed is going to come from 6x cubed minus 12x cubed. It's going to be minus 6x cubed. And then here there's only this 9 in front of the x squareds. For the x's, I'm going to get minus 4x, and I have, I don't have any other constants. So, this is going to be equal to zero. Wow, this is a quartic, we don't like quartics, but ah, we're lucky. There's an x in each of these terms. So I'm just going to flip the sides, I hope it's not too confusing, so I'm just going to write this side here, and the zero here. Well, I'm going to factor out an x. So it's going to be x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4 equals zero. Now this is a no-worthy pointing step. I've now got a cubic, and it's not immediately obvious how to solve that. Well, often in step, you just have to try integer values. Try zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, and we'll see what happens. Well, if you stare at those coefficients long enough, you see that, well, we have one and nine, that's the 10, minus six, minus four, minus 10, those will cancel, therefore one, is a root, and therefore I know that x minus 1 is a factor. Well, clearly here I'm going to have to have a quadratic, so that here's going to be 4, and then check this for yourself, but in fact the, um, the coefficient in front of the x is minus 5. Now again, just factorise this, so I'm going to get x, x minus 1, I'm going to get x minus 4, and x minus 1. Boom! Our solutions are x equals 0, 1, and 4, with 1 being a repeated root. Well, we're done, right? We're done. Well, no, we're not done. We're not done. Of course we're not done. We've squared, right? And what happens when we square? Well, let's just take a very simple equation. 2 equals x. The solution to that is 2. Well, let's square both sides. Can we get x squared? You know, you know what's going to happen. We get plus or minus 2 when we, when we get our final answers at the end after we square. Oh, this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare. Well, not quite. I mean, it introduces four solutions, but there will still be some real solutions in there, some valid ones. So it's just a case of plugging the numbers in and checking. So if we check x equals zero and plug it into here, we're going to get square root of zero plus one, which is one, plus square root of zero, which is zero. So this left side, this bit is one, then we get minus 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 1. So it's 1 minus 1, which is 0. So this works. Now, if you check x equals 1, just plug it into here. You see that also works. 
Now you check x equals to 4, that also works. What's the method? Well, let's just try the exact same thing for part i, right? It works to treat, so why do we change? So, you have the square root of 3x squared plus 1 minus 2 times square root of x. And now there's a blind spot on my whiteboard, so I'm going to just move this down. And say so this is equal to 1 minus x, right? Blind spot here. So I'm going to square both sides, so I get 3x squared plus 1. And then this times this is going to be minus 4 times the square root of x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1. And then squaring this, I'm going to get plus 4x. And that's equal to 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Now I'm just going to simplify this. So I move the x squared to this side. So I get 2x squared. I'm going to get um, 6x in total. The 1's cancel again, perfect. And we can move this to the right hand side, so I get 4 times the square root of x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1. And now let's just simplify this stage, let's just divide by 2, so I'm just going to divide by 2 here. So I get x squared plus 3x equals 2 times the square root of x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1. Again, zoom out. Wow, 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 these two lines match up. These two lines match up, right? And what that means is all these lines are going to follow from this line. And therefore our solutions, our possible solutions, are going to be exactly the same as here. So it's just a case of checking these solutions with our second equation. So, again, we're not going to do that here. But if you check x equals 0, you see that that works with part ii. If you check x equals 1, you see that works. And if you check x equals 4, you'll see that, that in fact, doesn't work. Oh, wow, this has been amazing so far. It's been very, very, very fruitful, this technique. Let's just try it with the third part. Let's smash it out. So, move everything with the square root on one side. Minus 2 times the square root of x. Then you get 1. Uh, so this was, in fact, a plus in the original question. So it's going to be x minus 1. And then square this, well I see that if I square this I'm going to get 3x squared plus 1 minus 4 squared x times the square root of 3x squared plus 1 plus 4 times the square root of x equals 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Again, getting this beautiful red pen, highlighting that there. Wow. It's exactly the same as in the previous part. Right? This should be an x, that's why. This should be an x, right, from squaring this. But this is the exact same line as this. Which means we're going to get the exact same working. See? So part ii follows from part i, it's the same working. And part iii follows from this part, this part in cyan, the cyan colour, and therefore this final part also follows from this first part. So we have the same solutions. So it's just a case of checking those. So let's plug these in to the final part. Again, I'm not going to do that here, but if you plug that in, you see that x equals 0, our favourite solution, does not work. x equals 1, works. x equals 4, works. And we are done. We are done. Now, what we did here was a very, very common step. Very often in the step, the following parts to a question almost always follow the previous parts. You can save yourself a lot of work. Good luck with the exams. Thank you.